Are you ready for the real hot take? Are we ready to talk about school? Are you ready to talk about school? Because we were talking about education, and it's time to talk about fucking school. Are you also- are you fucking ready? <sighs> oh boy, here we go. Let's talk about motherfucking school, okay? So, um... I got a lot to say about- about fucking... school. <sighs> Guys! School's kind of bad, okay? You dropped out of school specifically to avoid this conversation. You and a lot of other people. You and a lot of other people, actually. Yeah, everybody here groaning when they hear about school. Isn't that a little weird? Isn't that, isn't that a little bit weird? That people, that people's reaction to school is so goddamn negative, okay? No, that's fine. That's fine. I, I don't disagree that certain things can be communicated in simple ways. Just some things really, really struggle to or can't. Okay? That's all. All right? Let's talk about it. Okay? I want to show you something real quick. We got a little we got a little study here. Okay? Here we go. All right? This is just a little brief thing. And this isn't meant to be the final evidence that proves everything. But a study was done. Um... Uh, this, there was a, a sort of informal study done by a writer for uh, a PhD who's a writer for Psychology Today, okay? And I want to show you this, okay? Let's look at this. 128 readers responded to the survey. So this is just an offhand survey, but I think it's illustrative, and I think it will prove to be a, a starting point. But again, not the last em empirical thing. 128 readers responded to the survey. 73% mentioned high school, 34% mentioned college, 12% elementary school, and 7% middle school or junior high. Nearly everyone rated their school, their dreams about school as unpleasant. Nobody rated them as pleasant. Exam dreams can be so real that we actually wake up convinced we just failed an important test. At least one in every five people will experience an exam-related dream in their lives. None of them positive. Okay? The modern education system is a shared nightmare, and we are all conditioned to assume that that's a normal thing and not indicative of something terribly wrong with the institution of schooling. Okay? A collective nightmare. Okay? And... Following from this, I want to talk about a hot take about compulsive schooling. Because there's been a lot of talk about it. A couple of people on Twitter were talking about it. There was some discourse about it. Um, Gayfesh, I literally had a dream that I had to retake high school. The dream lasted four years. I was 20 years older than anyone else in all my class. It was the worst dream ever. I have had almost that exact dream. In fact, frequently, I have nightmares about having not grad... Uh, about finding out right now at age 30 that I didn't get all of the credits I needed to actually graduate high school and that I didn't actually have my high school diploma. I've had that dream like within the last couple of months. Okay? And I was a stellar student. I killed at, uh, uh, academically. I was a in honor roll. Uh, I was on the dean's list in my college. I'm I'm very I was very good at school. So let me wind up this this what we're talking about real quick by talking about um by by talking about uh some of the things that I where I'm coming from here, okay? So um first of all, I was very good at school. In fact, I loved school. When I went to school, there was I was excited because it meant getting out of the house. It meant learning things, which I was I'm, I have always been excited about learning things. Big surprise that I'm excited about learning things. Um, I liked school by and large. Now there were some things I didn't like about school. I struggled uh, socially in some ways. Um, and what did I say? Compulsory. Yes, compulsory. Um, compulsory. So um, <clears throat> and uh, and I was very very good at school. I was, um, you know, I graduated in the top of my class. It was very, very good. I did very good in college. Um, also, I went to a private, unaccredited Christian school for a while. Believe it or not. I know, right? I grew up in a cult. Imagine that. I went to an unaccredited Christian school for a while. Um, I was almost homeschooled, okay? So I've, ha I've run the gamut of education. I've sort of been... 
Um, I've, I've sort of been in all of those spots. Um, and, uh, and so I, I have a lot of experience when I'm talking about this. And that's just to say that, so you understand the context of my words, okay? Look, school is traumatizing for most people. Uh, in my experience, it is severely traumatizing for most people and in the best of cases. And in the worst cases, it is life ruining. Um, I don't know if you know this, but like trans people have a really low rate of graduating high school. And that probably doesn't come as much of a surprise because of the homophobia and transphobia that gets slung at people who are gender nonconforming, people who are different. Um, but also because there is abuse and and the this bullying is often reinforced by teachers and by the structures of the school itself. Keep in mind there are schools that require um, that require the school counselors, the counselors who are supposed to be there to help you to divulge information to your parents, which your parents might be the ones causing you harm. This happens all the time. School counselors are used as a punitive measure. Puerto Rican musician says, yep, my social anxiety stopped me from going to my all-white school because I got called a dirty Mexican every day. That's horrible. That's horrible. But it's not just interstudent bullying. There is a lot of issues with school. And I want to talk about the idea of compulsory education, which is something that some lefties, but a lot of liberals, are totally, totally on board with. And I have a problem with the idea of forcing children to go to school on threat of state violence. And yes, that is what it is. In most of the United States, there are truancy laws which can get a parent in trouble, can get a parent fined or even put in jail time if their kid doesn't go to school, if their kid hates school. So this, by, by threatening the parent, this forces the kids to keep going to school, even if school is traumatic to them, even if they're not gaining anything from school, even if school is dangerous to them. Um, American schools have been increasingly converted into these sort of high security nightmares with security cameras and metal detectors and um, drills. Have you ever seen the drills that are that are that are required in a lot of schools now? active shooter drills where you have a guy go around and shake the door to scare the kids and the kids don't know because it's a drill they don't know it's not a shooter and that is that is you are required to go there by law by the state is that is compulsory education even if it's horrifying even if it's so nightmarish that it literally scars you for fucking life let me tell you something else do you know how many bomb threats i had growing up I lived through, I think, four separate bomb threats on my school. Four. Now, I was tough and brave and, and whatever, and I had, uh, at the time, I was mostly just dealing with depression and a little bit of anxiety, and, and it wasn't really fixated around violence. But I had four bomb threats, and everybody has to keep going. What if you had, like, if you are a kid who lives through a fucking bomb scare... What if you just don't want to go to school for a while because you're scared? You're not allowed. You're not allowed to do that. You have to keep going. There's problems with the idea of compulsory education, especially when we recognize, especially when we recognize that our educational system itself is completely fucked. And this is where we're going to get into the real meat, okay? Because schools are... They're not the bastions of learning that you think they are. They really are not. Schools are designed to be efficient. We cram students into way outdated um, uh, classrooms with uh, fuckloads of students in it, with no teachers, with teachers who have to buy their own shit. And by the way, that is all over the United States. Teachers have to buy their own um, stuff as a part of the job. They have to buy their own school supplies. And this is compulsory. You have to go to this where uh, you have to go and participate in a structure that factory that that treats children like uh like they're on an assembly line 
School doesn't allow you to choose what you're interested in. They force you to learn a bunch of topics that you might not even like or might struggle with. And if you do badly at that topic that you don't like, you're punished. You're punished. You might even get suspended if you're struggling with it. There is so much trauma wrapped up. There's a, there's a really great little thing. I'm going to show you this. Watch. I'm gonna, this is such, this illustrates it so goddamn well. Okay, ready? This is really cool. Come on, drills are not new. Boomers went through nuclear attack drills. That's why it's normalized. That's fucked. That's fucked too. That's really fucked. That's not better. You're not making a good argument for that. That's fucked. D have you seen the boomers? The boomers' br brains are gone. Shouldn't we at least teach kids the basic maths literacy? Fuck yeah. That's awesome. But why does it have to be compulsory? Why does it have to be compulsory? What if a kid is suffering and doesn't think that it's worth it to go to the school system for that? You could encourage them and offer them alternatives, but we don't. Why? Let's read this. Let me just show you this real quick. Ready? Mr. Krupp was told when to eat, when to read, and when to exercise. He even had to ask permission to go to the bathroom. He was constantly bombarded with pointless rules, ridiculous discipline, random searches, metal detectors, security cameras, and pharmaceuticals designed to make everyone feel compliant and docile. It was a lot like being a student at Jerome Horowitz Elementary School, except the prison had better funding. Damn, Captain Underpants. Damn, Captain Underpants. Whew. Whew. Now, the writer of Captain Underpants has been very critical of the school system. In fact, has written that into multiple of the books. Which is funny, because these books are often, uh, children in school are given these to read. <clears throat> um, and, and... I just want you to just take a second and... All, all conclusions aside, let's just put aside, like, policy conclusions, okay? For just one second. Imps, listen up for me for one second, okay? I want you to, um, um, I want you to just think about something real quick, okay? So just think with me. Engage with these problems without any necessary, like, any of the baggage of having to come up with an alternative or a solution. Isn't it kind of fucked? That we have um, horrific disciplinary procedures, factory conditions with with lines and lines of students who have to sit in uncomfortable desks, who um, where they're told they have to ask, they have to humiliate themselves and ask for permission to even go to the bathroom. They have to ask for permission sometimes to get water. They're usually not allowed to eat a snack in class because that's considered bad. The, the, the rules that you have to deal with in school are wild. There's so many of them. And you get in trouble. People get in trouble all the time. Kids with ADHD, often undiagnosed ADHD and undiagnosed autism, if they, if they, if they act out when they're a kid, kids don't necessarily know how to deal with the things they're struggling with yet. And yet they will be punished severely for acting out in any way. And, and again, we're not talking about any alternatives. I just want you to engage with the state of schooling as it is. Isn't that fucked? Even if you think that compulsory education is a good thing, isn't it so fucked that we literally put our students in essentially prisons for eight plus hours a day? Eight fucking hours a day they have to go. And the only reason you have to go to school for eight hours, even though your brain is squeezed dry, and I say this as somebody who is very good at school, after eight hours of school, my brain can't pick up any of it. And then they give you homework that you have to do, or you get detentions, and you suspensions, and you get yelled at, and people make you sit in a room all by yourself in the cold and in a comfortable table. Isn't that horrible? And you have to do it. They take up your whole life. In high school, I remember days where I did nothing but homework. I would go to school for eight hours. I would go home and do homework until I went to bed. Over and over and over again. And that is so bad. And it destroys the mind of people. Completely destroys the mind of people. And we have all sat here and dealt with it. Okay?
Detention and suspension are always full. Detention halls are always full of kids. It's so normalized. You punish them, you make them sit there for an hour after school, or maybe miss their bus even. I got detention for being late. Yeah, there's a million stories like that. Okay? This is so normal. It's a part of our it's a part of our entertainment. Go and watch a Nickelodeon TV show about schools. They all of this shit is a part of it. It's normalized. But what I'm telling you here is like I said, don't start thinking of alternatives yet. Don't think about policy prescriptions. I just want you to recognize the absolutely fucked um situation. Fun, would you be willing to talk about this a little bit? About what? About your experience with school and what you think about school. You want to come over here and try? Try. Yeah. Cuz I'd like I'd like to hear cuz you you're fine with me talking about it a little bit, right? Sure. Cuz you dropped out. Yeah. Well, so why don't you tell people why you felt like that? Here, Fawn's going to talk about her experience firsthand. Here you go. I'm going to give it over to Fawn for a second. Oh, here okay. You go, so, um I really didn't like school growing up for several reasons. The main thing was I, I didn't like anyone telling me what to do at all. Um, and I would go to school because number one reason I went to school was because uh, they I, I had been heard that they would threaten that if I didn't go to school, if I was a truant, then my, my mom would get in trouble. And so, of course, I was like, I got to go, even though I didn't want to. And so I would sleep through classes all the time. And I did, like, classwork and paid attention to the teachers. And, of course, there were subjects I liked, but I would never do homework because I was so protective of my time outside of school. I hated school so much that I wouldn't let them cut into it at all. Like, to the point where I was in high school, they were telling me stuff like uh, that I had to do summer school and Saturday school, and I never showed up for any of that shit. And by You ended up dropping out, right? Sort of. They drove yes. you out of the, fo the school system. Yeah, by six, 11th grade, I started, I had some gaps in my learning, and so I could not understand the math classes they put me in, but I was fine with everything else. But by that point, I'd become way, way, way disillusioned with it. All of my friends from school had either dropped out themselves or were older than me, and so they'd all graduated. And so I just didn't feel like any, there was any reason to keep going. But of course, I didn't want to completely leave school, and obviously there was still the truancy thing. So uh, I was going to go to an online school, but my birth certificate had not been updated, and it was this like tiny little pocket one that you could get in the 90s, but are not valid, uh, anymore. Not valid anymore. And so they said, oh, this isn't a real birth certificate, and so they wouldn't let me in t for classes for the year. And then I was like... And then you, Screw it. you gave up. Yep. They, they literally, they literally wouldn't let you go to school even when you tried to because you didn't do it in the right way. See, yep. this is the thing that I'm talking about. Thank you for that. Thank you. You're welcome. Mm -hmm. Thank you for being willing to talk about that. I really do appreciate that. Yeah. Um, I'll, I'll continue my rant. I, I was hoping that Fawn would come in and we could talk about this because Fawn has a very firsthand experience with it. I hate. I. I liked school when I was younger. I was good at school, and I still have a lot of trauma associated with school. And now you can you can see what happens if you don't have the perfect experience with 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 school. If you, it, they literally drive you out of it. They drive you into the margins. And keep in mind that if you have like a learning struggle or something like that, or if you have a tr trouble at home, there's no special education programs. There's no teachers available to teach you. It's. So messed up. Okay, so now that we've sat here and we've we've sort of sat with it, and we understand that the school system is incredibly fucked, okay? This, the school system is totally, totally messed up, and it's actually really, really sad and sickening, the shit that we do to kids, okay? Um, now let's talk about uh, the compulsory aspect, okay? Let's talk about the compulsory aspect. So we can acknowledge, we can acknowledge that this school system is totally fucked. 
And in fact, we can also acknowledge, I didn't even talk about the school to prison pipeline, which the school to prison pipeline has been discussed by prison abolitionists all over the fucking planet. The, the school to prison pipeline, for those of you who don't know um, what the school to prison pipeline is, the school to prison pipeline is the idea that basically schools, like specifically inner city and low underfunded schools, are basically designed to be a holding period until you can get in trouble, uh, until the people inside of them get in trouble and then can be put in prison, where they will do slave labor. Well, they will do labor for free, either for the state or for private prisons. And what this talks about is basically schools that have no chance, like almost no chance of success. You go to the school, the, the teachers are underfunded, everything's broken, um, you, the conditions are horrible, the food is bad, and so people act out. And then those schools have police officers on site. And if you act out, if you get in a fight, if you get in, if you f conflict with your teacher, you get charged by the in-school police officer and then you have it on your record and that means you can't get a job and so you turn to crime and then you end up in prison that's the school to prison pipeline and this is something that has been well documented okay i'm not done yet I i'm not done quite yet music combo hold on hold on for a second okay detention is always full of uh, black, indigenous people of color, and queer kids. Always. Every single time. And neurodivergent people. The autistic people, the ADHD people, all end up in detention. And it's funny how that works, isn't it? Because it's so easy for struggling to be mistaken as obstruction or bad behavior or whatever. And so they slam you in detention, and then that goes on your record, and you can't get out of it. Notice that you have a school record. You have a record, a transcript, that carries your punitive actions against you. It ruins your future, in addition to your present. So, all of this. All of this is why I say that it's wrong for it to be compulsory, okay? A system this fucked, no one should be forced to participate in. I do not care if it... Uh, technically decreases crime rates. I do not care if it, um, if, if technically on a numerical level it reduces child labor or something like that. The system shouldn't be compulsory. There are other ways to answer those other issues that don't involve forcing people to go into a disgustingly flawed institution that doesn't even do what it says it does. Everybody says that schools are about learning, but they're not about learning. If schools were about learning, we wouldn't need these giant grading systems. We wouldn't need permanent transcripts. That It's not about learning. It's about equipping you so that you can get a job. That's what schools are about. Make no mistake. That is the only thing that schools are actually about. They're not about learning. If it was about learning, we would do things very differently. Tests wouldn't matter because it would be about making sure that you understood the knowledge, not what points you get. They teach kids to comply, to memorize, and to build an obedience regimen. That's what they do. They teach you to be obedient and to do the things you're told. That is what it, you were taught to do. And then you build a resume so you can go to your job where you will be obedient and do what you are told. That is the job of schools. And with all of that in mind, why on earth, what possible justification do we have for making that compulsory? What fucking justification could anybody come up with for that being compulsory? You may as well say that we should have compulsory four-year prison sentences so that everybody knows what it's like to be in prison because that might reduce the crime rate. You want to slam kids into prison so that they get the prison experience so they know not to commit crimes in the future? Seems pretty bad to me. You're opposed to compulsory education because the current implementation of schooling is so royally fucked. Do I have that right? Yes, because I don't think that people should be forced to com to do things that they don't want to do ever. But especially when we can acknowledge that the entire system is completely fucked. And for the near future, there is no guarantee that it's going to get any better. So why on earth should we compel people? Why should we compel people? to do something that we know is so wrong. Isn't that weird? It's normalized. And we haven't even gotten into alternatives yet or anything else. 
Wasn't it made compulsory to combat child labor? Yes, it was. But I have a quick question for you, okay? Real quick. Wasn't it made compulsory to combat child labor? Yes. You want to know what you could do? You want to know what you could do to combat child labor that would be more effective than compulsing school at actually addressing that? Give give money to the people who are having to put their kids in child labor. Go find out why the fuck families are so poor that they have to have their kids work. And two, arrest the capitalists who are hiring children. Why the fuck would you put the compulsory aspect? If you're going to use the violence of the state, why would you use it to put kids into a building to make them go there? The kids who've done nothing wrong, force them to do something they don't want to do while you don't alleviate the the poverty while you allow the capitalists to walk free an absence of an alternative hold on a second let me ask you something real quick let me tell let me let me just ask people who are sitting here and we're not there yet we're going to talk about alternatives um we're going to talk about some alternatives in a minute but before we talk about alternatives I am about, I am about to just blow your minds. Hey guys, what? You think we should just free the slaves? Well, how the hell are we going to do the cotton then? How the hell are we going to get all the cotton? You think we should just get rid of it without a, something to replace it? Don't seem so smart now, do you? As it turns out, you don't always need to have an alternative on hand to, to fight against something that is absolutely atrocious. You don't. You do not have to go, oh yeah, uh, I want to have, um, uh, you know, I want to have the, um, the, the life sentence brigade instead of the death sentence brigade. You can just say the death sentence brigade is bad. Demon mama. Hold on one second. Demon mama. But if school is compulsory, how do you separate kids from parents to keep an eye on abuse? What the fuck? Who, who said it's the state's job to keep an eye on abuse? That it should be up to fucking communities. What are you fucking talking about? Since- What the fuck? Since when should it be the state's job to separate children from their parents? What the fuck kind of- Do you see- Do you see the level of- Okay, I got made fun of for sounding like an MGS villain for saying, um, that- we live in a panopticon society we do live in a panopticon society and that proves it the idea that you think the state should be separating every parent from every child just because there's a risk of abuse guess what M the state intervened in my life on multiple occasions and still didn't do jack shit nothing they couldn't do anything about me being in a cult even though they were involved even though i went to compulsory schooling didn't even fucking matter it doesn't matter The way that you com if you want to defeat abuse, you have to encourage robust communities. You have to encourage a model like, uh, like it takes a village. It does take a village to raise a child. Do you know why they say it takes a village? Because guess what? Sometimes the town drunkard has a kid, and then it's up to the n the uncle, 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 uh, uh, uncle Daniel. Okay, the bachelor. The, 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 the guy who's staying in your town and who's become a part of your culture and Uncle Daniil has to go, dude, I'm sorry your dad's a drunk. Come over and hang out at my place, okay? And then that person can be a surrogate parent. That's a million times better than having a a robotic and distanced and alienated uh, uh, state entity go, we must separate your children to confirm that the abuse is not in a direction that is convenient to us. Keep in mind that the state is perfectly fine when the abuse is in a, in a direction they favor. They're perfectly fine with pe with children being indoctrinated into, uh, into hyper-militaristic families. Uh, they're perfectly okay with, with families who send their kids away to JROTC and all of these other things. Perfectly fine. So, at the end, at the end of this, okay, cool, then I agree. One thing, I, uh, Music Combo says, one thing I'd like to share with you is not only whether, wh whenever I teach, but when I talk to people, I always explain why I tell people no. My plan is to tell every class I teach, they have the absolute right to call me out loud if I ever tell someone no, that's wrong, or no, I'm not going to let you do that without explaining why I said no. Your thoughts? That sounds fantastic. I think that's a really good way to encourage critical thinking. I really do. Now, some people like JROTC, and that's fine. 
that's fine. But notice that when you're put into indoctrin... And by the way, JROTC is indoctrination. I'm sorry, it just is. You all need to grapple with that. Those of you who don't think that the military indoctrinates you, it is. It is identical to cult indoctrination. It is identical. How do you deal with harmful communities? Harmful communities are very hard to deal with. They're difficult to deal with. And the answer, there is not a single answer. There is, uh, there is not a single answer to that. At what age then do you propose that kids can nope out of school? Do they need parental approval? Okay, uh, look, this is a, something that I encountered. Um, uh, there is, um, no, that was not, I already said that. Aztec, that was in the original post. That was in the original post. Yeah, you got a little cough going on there. Fucking hitting the bong too hard. Um, let me show you this. Let me show you this real quick. I'm going to show you a post that I had. Because I wanted to talk about this real quick. Let me see if I can find this post real quick. Gayfesh says, a married couple I'm friends with both work for their local school district. One is a janitor and one is a counseling administrator. And I was having dinner with them and they, they commented, it's super weird how they teach everyone at the district to be on the lookout for warning signs of grooming. But then we have the military recruiter sitting there with us in the cafeteria. Isn't that fucking weird? Isn't that fucking weird? Okay, hold on. I wanted to talk about this. Let me see if I can find the actual message that I did. Here we go. This was, this was what uh, I was having a conversation on Twitter. And this is what happened, okay? Um, real quick. Somebody said, uh, I said, oh, I'll just show you the conversation here. Whatever. Here we go. I'm going to show you the conversation here. I, I, by the way, this person was in good faith. So, like, I'm not roasting this person. Um, I think coercion is generally a bad way of doing things, especially dealing with children. Learning is something I think we can all recognize as a good thing, but we shouldn't impose it coercively. Oh shit, I need to change. Okay, hold on, let me change off that. Um, hold on. There we go. Oops. There we go, just chatting. Sorry about that. I forgot to change over my uh, subject. Let me do that real quick. Okay, so anyway, let's continue. <clears throat> thank you for that, vo uh, thank you for that, Natalie Marie. Appreciate that. I think we could easily inspire student, to, students to willingly learn without compulsion. I believe that, and we'll talk about that. In teenage students, maybe. On a six-year-old, no way. How much coercion is necessary with a six-year-old? I have never seen a parent have to fight with a six-year-old to basically do anything, and I was the oldest of seven kids. Six-year-olds are generally curious outside of small mood outbursts here and there. You don't have to force them. They want to listen. Most ch kids want most kids want to listen to their parents. If their parents say, hey, kid, it's time for school, then they'll go. You don't... Wh who fucking has to force a six-year-old to go to school? And if that's the case, why? I would ask why. You're trusting that a, for example, 15-year-old has a better idea of what education they'll need to attain future goals than adults. The school system absolutely needs to be reformed, but you can get your GAD at 16. How much younger do you think they should be able to leave? Listen, I don't think that we should compulse them to go to school. That doesn't mean that you let go and just say, fuck off, whatever. Parents still have a responsibility to guide and take care of their children. But I have to ask the question, why? Why, why would the child ha be so opposed to this thing if it's so universally good? And I don't think they are universally good. I think these kids know that they're agonizing experiences and they have a right to say, Jesus fucking Christ. And that's the problem that I have is that there's all this talk about compulsing people to do things and we can't even agree that it's a good thing. Imagine this. Okay, ready? Are we ready for our chat? Are we all ready for the alternatives? Are we ready to hear some of my suggested alternatives from the political edutainer on the internet? And these aren't lock solid alternatives, but they're just to get you thinking about it. To think, to get you to undo that programming that tells you that school is exactly what we need. We need more compulsory education. Everybody needs to be a worker bee. Okay, here we go. Watch this. Imagine what if we had traditional public schooling available not compulsory available and students could choose to go as frequently um as they desired and they would be encouraged when they go to attend each class 
um, it would be considered standard to publish uh, lesson notes from each day so that if students needed to take a day off because they were sick or exhausted or uh, or mentally unwell, that they could do so without feeling like they were going to get in trouble, without having to jump through hoops and get a doctor's note and all this nonsense. They could just not if they wanted to. We already do this in college. And let me tell you, the average 18-year-old who's going into college is not smarter than the average 14-year-old. Not meaningfully. They're just as dumb. But in college, we let the students skip whatever the fuck they want. So, why don't we make schools inviting an optional thing that you can do every single day? And then, let's provide some other cool government programs. Hey, why don't we make some... Oh, doesn't even have to necessarily be government, but we'll talk about it in a government sense because we're talking about it with the presumption of a state because I don't want to go into... I don't want to go all the way into that. We'll talk about that too. Let's say that in addition to public schooling, we also have online education, online public education available that is maintained by... Uh, by communities, by libraries, and even by the federal government. You have online education that anybody can do at any time. Any time. Imagine it like public Wikipedia. You can go there and there will be lesson plans that you can follow at your own pace to educate yourself at your own pace as your life permits. And you'll be encouraged. There could be all kinds of really, really wonderful encourage encouraging things that would be awesome. And then what about we add a third layer just in case? What if you also have the alternative to do a something like a social service option where you can learn a trade or a skill while voluntarily participating in things like cleaning up your community, uh, learning forestry, cleaning up national parks, things like this. Non-intensive, non-dangerous labor that you can choose to go to of your own right and there is no punishment if you don't show up. You can just go do it and you will get the benefits of it. Maybe you could even get cool things. Like who knows, maybe if you go in and, and do that you get uh, food vouchers or something cool that like gives you something else. An alt one alternative to school is basically government funded skill share and would probably be a hundred times cheaper than school and more effective because you wouldn't be traumatizing generations of kids. But that's the secret. You see, the reason why we don't have these things is because school is really good at one thing. Producing workers. Producing soldiers. Producing socially valuable individuals. That's what it's good at. And that's why it's not going anywhere. And that's why I oppose it. And that's also a huge reason for why I don't support compulsory education. And here's the thing. If there is, like, a concern about like uh, a parent who is for is like imprisoning their child that's already a problem we already know how to deal with that that's called we have ways to deal with child abuse in-person elements to online learning would be amazing i don't even think online learning has to be the only thing what about workshops what if like what if like instead of going to a school year for eight months out of the year or seven months out of the year what if instead there were just classes going on at all times in a cycling order and you could just jump in at will you could say hey i'm not doing anything this summer and my friends are away this summer because they're off doing something or they're on vacation or whatever i'm gonna take a class this summer out of my own volition here's something that's super interesting to me blah 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 Babinska says, we had some discussion on this on the Docord. Docord is amazing for discussions like this, like 10 hours ago. And I think it's important to couple this with a reformed concept of family, community, child raising, rather than private suburban life of kids that are growing up in a community and learning from other adults. There's a lot of useful learning there too. I agree with you. That's why I said we need to adopt a take and an it takes a village mentality to child raising. Super important. As it turns out, guys, did you know that you can be the difference? in a kid's life without being like a weird Reddit investigator, if you live as a part of a community, if you reconnect, if we're able to rebuild the concept of community in our country and in our world, if we're able to rebuild that, there is mutual accountability that comes from community. You understand that, right? That if you have a big family, you got uncles, you got aunts, you got grandparents, all of whom can go, hey, you know, I really don't think let me, let me help out here. Let me offer what I have to bring. 
There's so many ways that we could live better, that we could live better lives, that we could learn better, that we could traumatize people less if we just challenge our assumptions. And that's why, that's why I try to instill in my lovely, lovely imps, always, I try to instill a, a sense of crit critique, crit being critical. I want you to think about these things and go, actually, you know what? It's really fucked up because it is fucked up. Our school system is completely fucked. And the fact that you are literally threatened. I mean, Fawn just told you. Fawn just told you himself. Like, Fawn was terrified of the idea that its mom was going to get arrested. Isn't that fucked up? Isn't that f a fucked up thing? And that is regular. That is normal all across America. Isn't it so fucked up that kids have to worry about have on their shoulders as children who are developing and learning and their brains are growing they have to have the pressure that their parents might be, might get arrested because they didn't do good enough in school and they got in trouble so fucked so yes i think that more or less covers all of the bases about this about this particular topic um of what i wanted to talk about on this particular topic uh compulsory education has um a lot of issues um and yeah we live in a troubled world our world is full of all kinds of challenges but just because a system exists just because an institution exists doesn't mean that it should doesn't mean that it has to keep existing um there's a thing that zizek says um i think it was zizek who said this maybe i'm wrong maybe i'm misquoting but he talks about um a certain pathology of liberals that states that essentially once something comes into the world it cannot leave and this is very true of neoliberals, especially neoliberals, but liberals of all stripes. The idea that if a institution exists, it can't be gotten rid of. That's why we still have ICE. We know ICE doesn't need to exist. ICE is a brutal, wasteful, disgusting organization. But you can't get rid of it because what would replace it? Nothing. You don't need to replace it. And I would say that you could make the same argument about school. There are tons of ways to learn things. There are tons of different systems that we could put into place, but we don't need to replace a mass traumatization structure. Because, as it turns out, just because something has come into the world, just because a state institution has come into the world, it doesn't necessarily have to stay.